What's going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. Continuing on in my series of Peter Jackson reviews in today's video, I'll be taking a look at this 2005 monster epic, King Kong. So King Kong was released in 2005, this film being a remake of the 1933 film of the same name. Interesting trivia, this was the movie that got Peter Jackson into filmmaking, the 1933 original. It is his favorite movie of all time and it was the movie that propelled Peter Jackson to become a film director. So without that original 1933 classic, we probably would not have the film director that we have today. So this was Peter Jackson's first project after directing the Lord of the Rings trilogy. This was originally supposed to be one of his first Hollywood productions because studios know, knew that Peter Jackson was obsessed with King Kong. Some of the deals fell through and Peter Jackson ended up doing the Lord of the Rings movies instead. After the success of the Lord of the Rings movies, Peter Jackson got his wish and got to make his King Kong movie. The film was released in 2005 to some critical success and the film was also very successful at the box office well. It was one of the highest grossing movies of that year. The movie did have kind of a mixed reaction from a lot of fans. Some enjoyed the spectacle, others criticized the runtime. Other people thought it was unnecessary to remake a movie like this. This is a movie I've had a love-hate relationship with for the longest time. So, what do I think of King Kong this go-round after sitting off on it for quite a few years? Let's find out together. In 1933, New York, an overly ambitious movie producer coerces his cast and hired ship crew to travel to mysterious Skull Island, where they encounter Kong, a giant ape who is immediately smitten with the leading lady. And this movie stars Naomi Watts, Jack Black, Adrian Brody, Thomas Kretschmann, Colin Hanks, Andy Serkis, Evan Park, Jamie Bill, Craig Hall, and Kyle Chandler. So King Kong was a movie I've had a love-hate relationship with for a while. This is a movie where I've always enjoyed the scope and ambitions of the project, and you can see Peter Jackson's clear passion for this material. But at the same time, I hated the three hour runtime. Like, did this movie need to be three hours long? Like, really? It's a monster movie, for crying out loud. You're not expecting any real substance to a movie like this. Why the all that extra runtime? Interestingly enough, the last time I saw this movie, about, I think, 2015, 2016, I forget when, I gave it like one and a half out of five stars on Letterboxd, which, yeah, that was a bit harsh, I'll admit that, and I'll admit when I'm wrong. And I will say I was wrong to give it that rating. I think because I must have had a bad day that day or something, and I just did not really see why people love this movie. And I think I saw it before I ever saw the 1933 original. And speaking of, I do like the 1933 original, by the way. I have reviewed it before on my channel. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. I do like the 1933 original. It's definitely a product of its time as far as acting goes and character development, but the spectacle of the 1933 King Kong is amazing, and it is definitely worth checking out for the spectacle alone. Anyway, back to the Peter Jackson one. This is quite a good movie and you can tell Peter Jackson was passionate about remaking this movie. He goes all out into making an epic out of the source material. And I have to respect Peter Jackson for that. There's a lot of great aspects of this movie that I do highly enjoy. Like I love the cinematography. I love the use of color that's in the film. I love like the throwback style that it brings. It feels like you're watching a classic epic while watching King Kong because of Peter Jackson's clear dedication to the source material. The visual effects are very remarkable. I love the motion capture and the CGI using the film, which for the most part have aged very, very well. There's a couple of shots 
that I don't think have really shown its age, but for the most part, the CGI holds up very well. I love the motion capture design for King Kong. Andy Serkis plays the character much like he did Gollum, and he does a great job at bringing so much emotion into this giant ape. And he's excellent at doing stuff like that. It's amazing how Andy Serkis has not gotten any Oscar buzz yet in his many, many years of being in the business now. This man is seriously underrated. He needs some recognition, Oscars. Another thing that I like about King Kong is this movie actually made me invested in the human characters. Like I said, one of my issues with the 1933 film is I found a lot of the characters very one-dimensional. Like Anne, the actress, after she gets taken by King Kong, she becomes this annoying screen queen and there's no character in her. Well, in this version, Anne, here played by Naomi Watts, has a character throughout the whole movie. Like, she was already this determined actress at the beginning of the film who's down her luck and needs a big break. She sees this as her big break. And even after Kong takes her, she and King Kong have this believable friendship throughout that's actually very emotional at times. And I actually do enjoy that. In fact, another thing I love about King Kong is that while the original film was just King Kong is a monster that got defeated by a girl that he had a crush on, here you actually feel sympathy for King Kong in this when things don't go his way. Like when you see like when he gets taken out and shipped to New York in the third act of the movie, you pity King Kong because he's being taken away from his home and he's just protecting what he likes, the environment that he's a part of. And here, because of that special bond he and Anne have, it just makes the King Kong story all the more compelling and even tragic when King Kong meets his end on the Empire State Building. And that's what I love about Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson said he cried when he was nine years old when he first saw King Kong fall off the Empire State Building. And you feel the emotion when he directs this thing. That's why I think the characters in this movie are a step up. Jack, I thought, was super bland in the original. Here he's played by Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody gives a lot of gravitas in his take of the character. And Carl Denham, the film director. Here he's played by Jack Black. The original King Kong, he's just super hammy and you can't really take him seriously. You think Jack Black would do the same thing since Jack Black's a natural funny man, but no. There's actually a more serious side to Jack Black's portrayal of the character, and he kind of plays him as more of a villainous character because he does a more of a con man type approach to the character. But you still see where Jack Black's character is coming from, and Jack Black's charm makes you understand where he's coming from without going full on mustache twirly villain. So great acting on Jack Black's part in pulling that off. The performances in here are really good. The spectacle of this movie is fantastic. Whenever Peter Jackson gets to recreate one of the iconic scenes of the original King Kong, it's just filmmaking magic. Whenever it's King Kong facing off against the T-Rex, or the big climax at the Empire State Building. They are both fantastic sequences that show how much King Kong loves the source material, and he does a beautiful job of replicating why he loved the original so much and doing his own stamp on the sequences that he loves. This is a clear passion project. And I have to respect Peter Jackson for doing something ambitious like this. Now, going into my negatives, yes, I still don't like the three hour runtime. This movie did not need to be three hours long. There's a lot of extended filler in this movie that should have been cut. I, the original King Kong from 1933, I looked at the runtime just before turning the camera on, and the original King Kong was only an hour and 45 minutes long. And it was a better paced movie. Yes, I do think the movie's flawed and was more of a product of its time, but I do think the original 1933 film is the better paced film, and I think it's the more rewatchable film in that regard. And I still enjoy it as a fun monster B movie. This one, I can't say I'll rewatch this as much because of that extended runtime. There's so many scenes in this film. It's like, 
why didn't they talk with Peter Jackson to get some of these scenes cut? Like, some of these scenes go drag on and on. Like, the build-up to Skull Island on the boat is just torture to watch, honestly. And then some of the side quests with some of the side characters, I don't really find that interesting. Uh, there's this extended action scene with some of the side characters where they're chased by these dinosaurs where the dinosaurs are being chased by raptors and the dinosaurs are chasing the humans and that scene is just plain stupid i'm sorry the visuals there have not aged well at all and it reminds me a lot of some of the worst cgi scenes and some of like the star wars prequels or even in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Sequences like that are big stretches and it makes the film feel disjointed at times visually. There's even a scene where uh, Naomi Watts and Adrian Brody's characters, they escape from King Kong by jumping on a bat. And I'm like, that's too far-fetched. I know it's a monster movie at heart and monster movies have this suspension of disbelief. But you're also making an epic at the same time, and Peter Jackson has this more serious tone to it. That some sequences like that just kind of hurt it a little bit at the end of the day. And they do stick out like a sore thumb. Now, at the end of the day, I do think this is a really good movie. I actually do really like and respect King Kong, even with its faults. While I do think at the end of the day, the King Kong movies that I'll go back to are the original King Kong, as far as the one telling the classic story, or Kong Skull Island, the new MonsterVerse film that definitely had the monster B-movie vibe while telling its own story that I really, really dug. I have to respect Peter Jackson's King Kong. I like that he took a story that he loved as a kid made his own unique stamp on it with some amazing state-of-the-art effects that show how far the filmmaking has come since the original 1933 film. And it's really impressive that he was able to do an ambitious project like this. It did not need to be three hours. It can be a little excessive and pretentious at times in that regard, but I do enjoy the effort of this movie. and. The movie is all the more w worth watching to get to all the cool stuff in this movie. The King Kong action, the Beauty and the Beast angle of the story, the performances. There are some great aspects of this movie. Even the James Newton Howard score has some very touching moments at times. And I really enjoy the overall emotional stakes that this movie had to offer. I don't think this is near the best of Peter Jackson. It doesn't come anywhere close to the heights that his Lord of the Rings trilogy did, but King Kong is still a really good movie in its own right, and it definitely shows why Peter Jackson is such a visually striking director, and I enjoy projects like this, passion projects that are done so well by great filmmakers. Not a perfect film, but still a really good one that I deeply admire and appreciate. So I'm gonna give his version of King Kong a 4 out of 5 stars, and on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 77 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of King Kong as part of my Peter Jackson director series, where I'm reviewing his complete filmography from his directing debut to his most recent film. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're a fan of Peter Jackson, I'll leave a link in the description below for a playlist where you can catch up on all the other Peter Jackson reviews I've done so far. At the time of this video, I have reviewed the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and I've reviewed all his early films, films like Brain Dead, Meet the Feebles, Heavenly Creatures, The Frighteners, just to name a few. I have some more Peter Jackson reviews to cover in this series, so if you're a fan of Peter Jackson, don't forget to click the link in the description below to catch up on my past videos, and don't forget to click the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified of future Peter Jackson reviews. Join me next time in this director series where I'll be taking a look at his 2005 film, The Lovely Bones. I'm intrigued to check this one out. I've heard it's one of the weaker Peter Jackson films. I know some people who have trashed this film, but I like giving films an open mind and I'm still intrigued to check the film out. I know it's got a young Saoirse Ronan in it and I've grown to really love that actress in more recent years, so I'm really excited to see 
what she's going to bring in a movie this old and early in her career. The Lovely Bones is the next film in the Peter Jackson director project, so be on the lookout for that review coming very, very soon. But if you've seen King Kong, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!